Welcome to a Fast Tips Addendum video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Yesterday, I put together a video showing you how to convert your system over to ISO date standard so that you could avoid confusion with international dates. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video, I'm making this change myself right now, and I figured I'd have some updates for you. Well, I got some updates for you. So I spent yesterday making this change in my database and I spent all day today dealing with some of the ramifications that came about because my database is about 20 years old. I've been building it since 2002 when I started this company and me from 20 years ago. Well, let's just say I wasn't as good of a developer as I am today. So I took a few shortcuts and some of the queries and some of the forms and well, I ran into some problems today. Let me address these and show you how to fix them because chances are, if I made this problem, you'll probably run into it too. Before we get started, if you have not yet watched my ISO dates video, go watch it. There's the link. I'll put a copy of it down below so you can click on it. The ISO dates a link there takes you to the access one. I did three versions of this one for windows, one for Excel, one for access. This, this today's video is access specific. Okay, and if you have not watched my video on the date value function, how to how to take a, a date time value and display it just as a date, go watch this video too. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template, and as you can see, the dates have automatically switched over, right? I didn't have to do anything to these. All right, my customer sense date right there, order dates, all this tr transfers right over, as long as you have the short date format. And I do have to say, uh, after looking at... Um, these dates for the whole day now today and yesterday i i really really like it it's so much more easy and so much more logical to look at dates that are formatted like that um now the number one problem that i have is because of a shortcut that i took when i didn't know better now in my order table my order date is not set to date i have it set to now because and this isn't this isn't bad I, I recommend this if you care about what time of day the order came in. Now, I have a web-based business, so I like to see what my busy hours are. But any any business could benefit from this, right? If you even have a, a brick-and-mortar store and you want to know that most of your orders, you know, come in from, from shoppers between noon and two, okay? So when I put new orders in the system, when they come in, I'll just go to the table here, okay? New orders that come in the system get full date time values all right not a big deal the problem that i have is that 20 years ago me didn't know how to properly convert that if i just want to get the date value here's what i did i'd go to a query like create query design all right i bring in my order table okay here's the order id here's the order date all right now if i wanted to aggregate this or whatever so i could just get a single date value for that instead of the time approach on there what i did 20 years ago was i used the format function okay i'd say like date only is format and then i'd go order date comma and then i'd go mmddyy which was the standard date format that i was used to okay no problem and then i could take this run this through an aggregate query right and it worked just fine for the past 20 years the problem is when you do that, first of all, now I had to go back through my entire database. I spent a couple hours today changing queries that have that hard-coded format in it, uh, changing a lot of my VB code where I use the format function in there, okay? Because it's obviously not going to be compatible now with the new date format. In addition, when you use the format function like that, it changes this to text now. This is actually a text value. And what gives it away is if you look here, you see, see how that date lines up on the left side of the, I want to say the cell, but the column, <laughs> the field, <laughs> okay? Whereas a proper date and a number field lines up on the right side, like they should. So that should be your first indication that that's actually no longer a date value. So what I would have to do is, if I wanted to use this in something that involved a date, is convert it back to a date. I would have to take that and go see date with the convert date format. All right, and then I run that. Okay, <laughs> now it's now it's back to a date value. Okay, but the problem is is that this format function can cause issues. So the proper way to handle that 
is to use the date value function. So I went through today and I replaced all those format commands with date value. All right, date value of order date just gives you the date part only and it leaves it as an actual date field and it will display using your short date format. Okay, so this was most of my day today. That took about two or three hours just going through and cleaning up a lot of that because I've been building my database for a long, long time now <laughs> and I didn't know about this back then. So you're, you're benefiting from my mistake. Okay. <laughs> part of, part of the way that you learn this kind of stuff is the, is the goof is the, is the make mistakes and the screw up. And, and that's, that's how you learn. That's how you remember stuff. Now, another thing you can do, if you only want to see the date displayed differently is you could change the format property. So for example, right now I've got that. Okay. If you only want to display this value, you can change the format property right here in the query or in a form field. Just go to the format property and go yyyy dash mm dash dd. And if you want the time on there, right, hh colon nn, for example. Okay, that will change the way that that field is displayed, but the data is still in there. So even if you come in here and say you want to see this as a short date, okay, the data is still in there with the full time. So if you want to do something where you're matching it up day by day or you're making an aggregate query out of it, that's not going to do it. That'll change the way it looks. And a lot of the time I do that on my forms, right? I'll put that format in the field so it'll display that because that's generally what I want to see is only the date. But if I click on it, I do want to be able to edit it down to the second. Okay. All right, so there you go. Just a quick addendum for today. Just wanted to share that with you. I'll probably have more as I go along, but uh, everything seems to be running just fine. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below. We'll see you soon. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to, I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now. If you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube.
Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.